was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water. I believe the whole camp meeting, every speaker, has been pointing to this message. We're wanting to walk on the water. I want to talk to you of what I felt the Lord impressed my heart with. It's time to take leave of your senses. It's time to take leave of your senses. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ the King, I'm asking the mercy of the Lord to touch me to preach good. I'm asking the blessing of God upon these great people. Help me right now. It's your church. It's been your camp meeting from the first note, from the first song. I'm asking supernatural powerful demonstration energized divine word of God let it explode upon us and in us even as I endeavor to minister Lord please help me to do a great job in a little bit of time in Jesus name I pray everybody said amen God bless you and you may be seated Time to take leave of your senses. They've kept you locked up long enough. You just go slow. I'll be fast in a minute. We live in a world that calculates everything. Our generation is cursed with the ability to figure and reason. We are cursed with this thing that the best thing in life is security of mind. We certainly do not want to be known as people who have taken leave of their senses. But I would like to tell you as I begin that the reason why we're not walking on the water yet is because we've stayed within our senses. Staying with your senses produces security that our carnal carcasses enjoy. It also keeps you from drowning. It also protects your ego and your pride from being embarrassed. Investors hate to take risks. Lenders are cautious. Insurance folks want your life history. We live in a sense world. Tabulated, categorized, computerized. I want to tell you before I start preaching, I'm not preaching so you can just be still. I'm just kind of introducing it. We have two types of knowledge in the world. We have sense knowledge and we have revelation knowledge. Sense knowledge is what you get in public school, high school, and college campuses. 
sense knowledge comes to you through your five agents, your five senses. Touch and taste and see and hear and smell. They are the avenues that God has ordained to be able to bring information to your brain so that your brain can examine, investigate, compartmentalize, store for future recall. The problem with living in the sense realm is that senses are only designed to contact matter. Unfortunately, God ain't matter. Which means you can be smart and dead. Now warm up a little, I'm fixing to start. Our bodies are nothing but laboratories, receiving stations of information. Our five senses are just servants that bring stuff to us. And if we're not careful, we'll stay within those senses and never one time interact with the supernatural. Hello. Here I come. That's why scientists medical people and the learned are driven nuts when you say I'll pray they're not inferior thank God for baptized brains but you're talking about another dimension when you say I'm going to pray you fry their brain when you say, I'm going to go talk to a once dead man that I don't believe is dead. <laughs> Their little mind says, does not compute. Does not compute. Does not compute. Right. When you tell somebody who's got a degree, I just got the Holy Ghost. You just got the what? I just got a spirit. Where'd you get it? Another realm. And it blows their brains because God won't sit under the microscope. And God won't let them find him with the telescope. But he will let him locate it with the eye of faith because that's another realm. You stay with me, I'll get there in a second. A blind man cannot tell color because the only avenue that he can reason with for color is blocked. A deaf man cannot appreciate music because the avenue that's designated for him to appreciate it is inoperative. A woman who for some reason in her her structure does not have a good smeller you're wasting a $50 bottle of perfume on that chick now hear what I'm fixing to tell you it's kind of dumb to consult our senses when we're talking about spiritual things I am right. I am right. I am right. Sense knowledge is totally limited to the avenue of discovery. I told you this, and because of times, you need to hear it again. 
You know where philosophy comes from? You know where the doctrine and theory of evolution and metaphysics comes from? It's hungry men and women who do possess a great deal of knowledge, who step to the last frontier of revealed knowledge, but cannot find out the reason why and the power of wherefore. And they will not cross the bridge of faith into the realm of the spirit so it forces them to become philosophers and invent theories but a little old girl a little old boy you can preach to them about Jesus Christ and Calvary and the Holy Ghost and they'll just jump up and say yeah because the real realm is not the physical realm the real realm is the invisible realm. It was here before this one got here. Hey, am, am I telling the truth? I'm just, just checking to see where I am. Now I'm going to get to my sermon. I just kind of had to let you know that I, I can't read. Are you ready, Brother Anthony? Matthew 14. Matthew 14. Read. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. Yeah. And to go before him unto the other side. Right. And while he sent the multitudes away. Read. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. Stop. Hold a second. Three pictures. He just fed their bellies. That's all most people want kingdom of self I looked at that and here's what happens he sent the multitude away he went up in the mountain to pray and he sent the church into a storm now if Jesus was God incarnate he knew the storm was coming You want the supernatural? Stop griping about the storm. The storms that God allows in our lives become doorways and stepping stones to supernatural experiences that cannot come to us any other way. I was on the floor praying in the motel. I said, Lord, you sent these 12 guys into a storm. How come you didn't send the multitude into the storm? And the Spirit spoke to my heart and said, the multitude wasn't worthy of the storm. They only follow me for healings and for feedings. But these 12 follow me because they love me. I'd be afraid tonight if we didn't have any storms in our life it could be that God looks at us and says I can't trust this one in the storm I can't trust that one in the storm they're immature they're self-centered they're babies God send us some storms to reveal the quality of our godly character I'm trying the best I can doc Read on, doctor. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. Yeah. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Right, read. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus... The late, wait a minute. The fourth watch of the night. The night's got four watches. Six to nine, nine to twelve, twelve to three, three to six. What it just said was the darkest hour of the night. Somewhere between three and six a.m. The darkest hour of the night. Jesus has been praying. His disciples have been struggling to obey. That's what we've been doing. We have done the very best we could with the instructions, how we understood it. We're trying to get to the place that Jesus has sent us, and we've been in these storms, and we're wondering what's going on. Could it be there's nothing going on, but we're fixing to enter into a dimension that we have been wanting for so long?
it's going to take the storm to bring the Savior to us in a new dimension. Well, you don't want it, I'll preach it to me. Now I can just see Jesus, you pardon me, I'm fixing to talk about my dad. I can see Jesus up on the shore, he's been a prayer. He's a watching his little bambinos out in that boat, trying to do the best they can to be obedient. And this winds are blowing. And it's rocking the boat. And you know, all of us are vain enough to believe that when we have no progress, we must have missed the will of God. We may not have missed nothing. But I wonder on the boat, I wonder if while they were fighting this horrible storm, if some of the crew members didn't say, Hey, Pete, did you get the instructions right? Did the chief say go this way? They did that to Moses, you know, when they got trapped by the Red Sea. They mumble and say, oh, God, we should have known better. guy talking to a bush and talking all this junk. Now that he's got us out here. You know, the pastor's a great guy when he leads you out of hell and trouble. But when you get trapped somewhere, it's awful easy to eat the poor slob. And I can just see him on that boat, Brother Price. Are you sure the Lord said go this direction? He knows the weather conditions. He wouldn't have sent us into a storm. Oh, yes, he would, my sweet, fine, feathered friend. Because in the storm, he's fixing to reveal himself to you and I. Like we have never known him before. want to take this camp meeting into outer space tonight I need you to hear what I'm telling you and Jesus is on the shore and he's watching his crew and they're doing the best they can Uh, Ma'am, sir, there is an oar on this boat for you. This is not a cruise ship to the Bahamas. I said everybody ought to worship. I said everybody ought to react. I said everybody ought to believe. I said everybody ought to release their faith. Friend, there's room on this boat for everybody to participate and make a contribution. Now you're going to have to hurry because I'm going to finish early. Yeah, well, this is going to be the truth tonight. Now watch this. Jesus is on the shore. Jesus is on the shore. And he's watching his, his little boobalas doing the best they can, trying to get where he told them to go. We have been doing that since we've become the Pentecostal movement. We have been trying to get where God told us to go. And finally, the storm is doing something to his little baby church that he doesn't want. It's producing frustration and fear. And when frustration and fear get high enough, ready to climax and go over the bow of this boat, you can rest assured that the Savior on the shore is fixing to slip his sandals on and head towards the storm. Got a feeling, Bishop Price, in about 10 minutes, the king's fixing to walk slap in this auditorium and bring with him a power from another dimension that's going to help us realize our fondest dreams. seated just a second here try to calm yourself a little you must understand the supernatural comes on the heels 
of obedience. Don't damn and condemn yourself because you don't think you're a great spiritual giant and something fantastic isn't happening in your life. You can't do anything greater than obey. And contrary to the books and the tapes that are out everywhere, God is not a glorified bellboy. You cannot snap your fingers and say, come here, boy. He is still sovereign. If he wants to move, he'll move. If he wants to delay, he'll delay. But whatever he chooses, I'm going to do everything within my power to obey God. Stay with me just a minute. I'm almost there. You gotta, please, stay with me, Bishop. Stay with me. I just, I, because I'm, I'm fixing to get a freako spirit on me in a second. A freako spirit. That's not, that's not unclean. That's clean. That, that means a freak with a little extra add a jazz arm. A freako. I'm a freak, but I'm fixing to be a freako. You're not understanding me. Friend, I've been in enough storms lately. I'm telling you, I really not want any more. Before I get to my next storm, I'd like for the Savior to come out to see me, to give me a little bolster in my faith, to take me to a new dimension in the Spirit so that I could handle the next plateau. I'm telling you, he's standing on the shore. And he's watching all the fear and all the frustration and all the dedication and all the commitment and all the obedience. And it's just about time he's fixing to start walking on the water towards me. Please be seated. Sit down. Please sit down. I want you to understand something. Jesus Christ could have, had he chosen, appeared on the bow of the boat. He could have just said, don't be afraid. I'm here. He didn't. And I looked at that and I said, now, what was the deal, Lord Jesus, about walking on the water? You can move faster than just walking on the water. Now just, just stay with me because I'm, I'm, I'm out there right now. I'm, I'm, out, I'm on the other side of a black hole right now. Just stay with me a second. And Jesus impressed my heart, Uncle Bill. He impressed my heart with this thought. Jeffrey, what was their biggest problem that night? And I said, the raging sea. He said, good answer. I put their biggest problem under my feet. You know what? I don't care what kind of problem you got tonight. He's still the sea walker. He still can put our biggest problem right under his feet and it won't take away from his majesty and his glory. But he wants you to have faith. Are you sick? The blood can put it under his feet. Are you discouraged? His prayers for you can put it under his feet. Please be seated just a second. I'm almost there. You got to understand something. Jesus doesn't just do things so we can go whoop the la. There are lessons in there. When Jesus Christ demonstrates, it is designed to develop higher faith. Now, now let's just let's ask the question. Would I be more inspired had Jesus just went poof? How you doing, Jeff? Or if I'd been in the boat and all hell on earth had broke loose and heaven had hit its face and my dad just kind of comes out for a stroll. Now you're laughing at me. I'm preaching tonight about taking leave of your senses. You think I'm nuts. You're nuts. 
you believe this story. And it don't make sense. When's the last time you old sportsman paradise people been down to Buggy Bayou somewhere out in your bass boat trying to catch a five or ten pound lunker and a dude come walking by? You know what? We do, Brother Merle, you and just what they did. We wouldn't jump up and say, oh, glory. Son, we'd abandon ship. Give yourself a little toleration. Don't run yourself down because when the supernatural moves on you, you don't just jump up and grab it. Sometimes the supernatural will bowl us over in an episode of fear. We need two things tonight, a demonstration and a declaration. For the scripture, well, read it for me, Reverend Anthony. And Jesus went to them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea. Now listen, this is not Ebbets Field. This is not Yankee Stadium. This ain't the polo grounds. This ain't the Astrodome. It is somewhere between 3 and 6 a.m. in the morning. They don't have flashlights. They don't even carry anemic fireflies. There is nothing out there to light up the sea. So when it says, when they saw him coming, that does not mean they recognized him. It just means they saw an image. Boy, I got a thought when I was meditating on this this afternoon. Maybe that's why we are so afraid of the supernatural and the dimension that we really want to go into because when God begins to deal with us about it, it's not very clear. It's hazy. It's foggy. It's almost like a, an image. And when the Lord speaks to our hearts, instead of saying, Hey! He goes, And we wrestle in ourselves. Is that you or is that me? so far away right now read for me doctor and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled thank you Jesus saying it is a spirit that's right it is a spirit but it had a body with it and now they become more afraid they cried out of the fear. supernatural than the storm cried out for fear wouldn't you be afraid see some guy walking on the water can't recognize him don't know whether he's demon or deity can I give you a little advice it's kind of easy whether to tell whether it's deity or devil if it's the devil it'll cause fear if it's the deity he'll bring assurance with the reverence the devil always wants to be afraid. The Lord will recognize you if you're afraid, he'll speak to you right away. Finish reading for me, Doc. They cried out for fear, but straightway. That means immediately. Jesus spake unto them. The funniest verse in the whole Bible. Peter's over there puking his guts out. Thomas is writing his memoirs of doubt. They're terrified. And now this specter starts saying strange stuff. Be of good cheer. Can you believe that? This ghost-like spirit walking on the water up to your storm and you're scared, slapped to death and you're fixing to have a coronary arrest and he says, get happy, chillin'. And I looked at that and I said, Brother Barnes, why did you say, Lord Jesus, be of good cheer? And it seemed to me like the Lord impressed my mind with, I want my people to have joy when it's stormy. I want 
them to have happiness when it's dark. I want them to have a vibrancy when they don't understand. I don't want them to just be sunshine children. They need to know I'll never leave them. I'll never forsake them. I'll never put on them more than they can bear. With every test, every trial, I will make a way of escape. For me, Doc. Be of good cheer. It is I. It is I. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid. Now the ghost-like figure identifies itself. It's me. Watch old Pete. And Peter him. answered him. I love old Pete. And said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Whoa. Wait a minute, Pete. I can see Andrew grabbing Pete, saying, now, Pete, 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 baby, this religious stuff's getting to your mind, baby. Now you're talking to spooky spheres out on the water. If you don't come back, Pete, what am I going to tell mom? Therefore, you won't, too. I'm fixing to get strong as acid. We need to stop paying attention to all the idiots that are in the boat that don't want to go out on the water. There's some things I want to do before the Lord comes. There's some experiences I want to have. I want to have them. And I'm not going to let everybody else on the boat that doesn't want to go tell me, don't take leave of your senses. See just one more minute. Almost there. I know what it is to be under the pressure. Look at me. You know what I am? I am crazy. Everybody says I'm I'm nuts. I'm, I'm out of my mind. I said, good. I said, why are you people in the boat? having a problem with me wanting to get on the water. When I was a honky-tonker and a boozer, when I was immoral and I was dishonest, I came to you and you told me a story far-fetched further than just walking on the water. You told me that there was a man named Jesus who got bumped off, who they buried, who they couldn't keep dead, who walked around for 40 days, who floated into the sky, sent back his spirit, went to build me a house. Now, friends, somebody's taking leave of their senses. I took you at your word and I went to the altar and you know what he filled me with his spirit my friend he filled me with the Holy Ghost I'm not worried about walking on the water Taking leave of your senses before you took leave of yours. God must have taken leave of his. God born in a barnyard. The father, a fetus. The creator in clay. Deity in dust hunted by Herod attacked by the Jews maligned by the people he came to save hated, rejected, despised sentenced by a coward named Pilate you talk about taking leave of your senses my friend, when you go treasure hunting, 
You try to find something that's valuable. You look for peculiar treasure. You look for something that's got worth. When Jesus Christ came, according to what you told me, he went into the garbage dump of humanity. He got looking for junk and refuse and garbage. Honey, you talk about a reclamation department. God is the reclamation department. He finds people on the junk heap of humanity and goes down and makes the drug addict okay. He makes the prostitute pure. He makes the liar honest. He makes the drunk sober. Friend, you talk about taking leave of your senses. Does it make sense that God would come looking for junk? Unless man is more than matter. Unless man is like his daddy, spirit. And that's why our universities in some areas have failed mankind. Because they have yet to understand that man is not matter. Man is spirit. And you cannot live your life within your five senses. Hello. I'm still telling the truth. Whew. Read for me if you would, Reverend. Be thou be, then me come unto thee on the water. Yeah. He said, Come. Oh, I've always liked that. I've always liked that. God leaves the criticism and the restriction to the bimbos in the boat. Anybody that wants to do something they've never done before with an honest and pure spirit, Jesus' favorite four-letter word has always been come. If the only thing that's keeping you from doing something in the spirit that you've never done or tried before, hear the word of the Lord. Now, I'm almost done. Don't go to sleep. I'm almost done. Read. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, ha! he He's walked on the take, water. He's taking leave of his senses. Let me try it again. He's taking leave of his senses. Why? He's got a word from the Savior. And four days of words from the Lord. What's holding us back? And he says, when he's come down out of the boat. You know, I've always seen these pictures in these Bible bookstores of Peter dying, you know, half sinking in the water. Lord, save me. I've always wanted someone to paint me a picture of his backside climbing down out of the boat. While the crew members are all going, see you, Pete. So long, Pete. What, what are you doing, Pete, leaving this security? It's, it's so safe here. I'm trying the best I can. He's come down out of the boat. Read. He walked on the water. He to did. He did. He did. Yeah. He didn't have the Holy Ghost. He wasn't baptized in Jesus' name, and he hadn't had his ear cut in a vent yet. No Holy Ghost, no new birth, no baptism in Jesus' name, but he is doing something. He's walking on the water. May I give you an admonition before I close? If you're going to venture into the supernatural, God help us. That the only reason we do it is to bring us closer to Jesus.
Did you hear me? That's why we need the desire of the supernatural. Not so we can get our picture taken. Not so we can sell our tapes. Not so people can say we're great people. But that somehow through that episode, I can come closer to Jesus Christ. So that I can get closer to my Lord and Savior. Okay. Just about done. Oh. God really does call us to things that don't make sense. He does. Ties don't make sense. Say all you want to, Doc. I look stupid, but I ain't stupid. I can hand. When you have a dollar and you take away a dime, you ain't got as much. Hey, Brother Hudson, you're laughing, but you believe it the other way. your people here's a dollar give God a dime and God will give you more than you have you don't make sense either I made 77 bucks a week when I come around you holy rollers I paid eight dollars a week tithes didn't make no sense to me didn't even have enough gas sometimes to go tarry for the Holy Ghost they had to pick me up so I could go to the altar and be in church and I gave that tithes and I said, man, that don't make no sense to me. And yet week after week, I'd have extra. Week after week, my bills were paid. Week after week, somehow God blessed me. And I got a raise. And God showed himself faithful. My friend, I've been paying tithes for 20 years. I can't afford to quit paying tithes. It doesn't make sense. But the kingdom doesn't make sense.
and think I'm crazy? You think that Joan, Sister Joan, do you think this makes sense? Dude comes up with a goiter, a cancer, a tuberculosis, a backache, a crooked arm, a blind eye, and you say, We'll take care of what 15 years of medical science couldn't do. Shaboom! But it works! I didn't say it made sense. I just said it works! I didn't say it made sense. I just said it's the word of the Lord. It works because God's kingdom is beyond your five senses. It's a spiritual kingdom. Do you think this makes sense? It don't make no sense. Lifting your hands don't make no sense. Raising and screaming don't make no sense. But it works. And we need to stop scrutinizing and let the power of faith and obedience work. You think the rapture makes sense? Just stand up and say, you think the rapture makes sense? You people are telling people who can think, spell dog and cat and ball, that all of a sudden one day you're going to go. <laughs> Not only that, the dead in the graves are going to go <laughs> before you go. <laughs> and we're going to have one big. <laughs> And all you're going to say is, there's going to be a sound of a trumpet and the voice of the archangel of the Lord and the dead in Christ shall rise and we which alive remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. It does not make sense, but it is the word of God and it's going to happen. Just hold on, I'm having a fit. Does it make sense, Billy Cole, that you could lay your hands on a hundred thousand people and they talk supernaturally in languages they've never learned? It doesn't make sense. Let me make one statement before I finish. The gospel of Jesus Christ does not make sense. It makes sense. It takes the poor and makes them rich. It takes the filthy and makes them clean. It takes the downcast and gives them integrity. Would you be seated? Five minutes. I would have been done, but you keep interrupting. Anthony, you about ready? Yeah, where were we? We were having a ball. Well, let's just keep on. Does it make sense that a one-time card shock pool hustler, and I used to be pretty when I was younger, That I would be preaching to thousands and thousands of people. Don't make a bit of sense as well. And all hell can release all its vomit and garbage on my brain. Can knock me down. The critics can eat me for lunch. They can damn me and condemn me and try to imprison me. But my friend, I will somehow climb back out of the rubble because I have resurrection power inside me. And nothing can separate me 
from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus nothing can keep you from being in the rapture if you want to be in the rapture nothing can keep you from being an overcomer if you want to be an overcomer Okay, please be seated. I can't see. Tentacle. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Watch this. This is so neat. But when he saw the wind, boisterous. The wind didn't change. The wind didn't change. It was boisterous before he left his security blanket. That's why some of us dudes are sitting on our carcass in the boat. Because all we're doing is observing the wind. The reason why the wind appeared to be more devastating than before was because Peter's position from the security to the Savior had changed. You see, some of us want to get out there in the spiritual and supernatural like this. Oh, you little hypocrite, just fall in the water. Come on. Didn't the king invite you? Didn't the king say, come? What you worried about? Don't worry about the dingbats and the critics. If the king has said, come on, get out of the boat and go do what you want to do. Okay, please sit it. I'm finishing the last time. And when, and when he saw the wind boisterous, why well, he was afraid. Because fear always attacks raw faith. You see, remember when the supernatural moved towards him? What will happen? They were afraid. Then the supernatural talked and said. Identification, it's me, don't be afraid, be of good cheer. If it's you, invite me to come. Well then, come on. Now fear gives way to faith. Faith steps out and tries to do something it's never done before while the critics stare at your back. That's exactly right. You don't see them and you shouldn't hear them. But as he got closer to the Lord, Fear comes again. Why? Get out of that boat. He took leave of his senses. But as he's walking by faith on the word, he's getting close to the Lord. His senses resurrect. Reason ridicules active faith. What if? And all of a sudden, he steps off the word and slides back on to his senses. And down he goes for the count. Read on, doctor. And beginning to sink, he cried. Beginning to sink, he cried. Saying, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand. I like that. Brother husband, he didn't say, listen, you little prima donna, you little dirty dog. You didn't fast and pray till your belly button fell off. That's why you couldn't do it. He didn't say nothing. God doesn't ridicule people that try. Critics ridicule people. Don't worry about God criticizing and damning and condemning. He'll leave that for carnality. He'll leave that for the devil. But immediately he grabbed a hold of him and saved him. Be seated, last minute, last minute. Read on. He said, Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him caught and, and said, said unto him, Watch this. Oh, thou of little faith. Stop. All the years I've heard preachers preach on this, articles I've read, tapes I've listened to, they've always damned and condemned poor Pete. I'm going to reverse it tonight. I think it was a, it was a commending. 
You know why? The cats in the boat didn't have no faith. It don't take no faith to sit safe. Hey, this guy did walk on the water with little faith. You got more than little faith. You got the Holy Ghost. Okay, sit down, please. Finish it right now. Wherefore did you doubt? Well, here's why I doubted, Chief. My God, there's a 140 mile an hour wind out here. I never have tried just walking on the water stuff, and I just kind of got plum scared. That's why I doubted. Could we continue this interview elsewhere? Watch this. Read. Wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, stop. I'm going to ask all your theological geniuses a question. How'd they get back to the ship? What was impossible to do alone? When Jesus got a hold of Peter, it became possible. We're going to walk with the king. And what we fail to do by ourselves, the king's hand is going to strengthen us and establish us and encourage us and bring us to safety. Don't be afraid to fail. Be afraid not to try. Would you stand? Hold on now. You ready, Anthony? Yes, you sir. You ain't done? Watch this. And then when they were come into the ship, Probably the wind not. ceased. Wait a minute. I didn't steal this. The Lord showed this to me. I'm going to show it to you. Watch this. And the wind ceased. Read. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped with him, saying... Wait a minute. Two results. Of one man trying brought eleven times more worship than Jesus had before. And point number two. Read. And worshiped him, saying, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Up to this journey, this Bible says, Simon Peter was the only one that had the revelation of who Jesus was. But his desire to move into a different dimension brought back with him to the boat a revelation for the whole crew. Do you understand the magnitude of what I just told you? That you and I can go home to our local assemblies. Not as Pentecostal prima donnas and ego trip idiots. But people trying to get closer to Jesus Christ. And in our effort, we can bring back to our local assemblies. To our district. To our nation. A beautiful spirit of revelation. So that it would provoke great worship of Jesus. I'm asking you right now, take leave of your senses. I'm asking, I'm pleading with you, take leave of your senses. Take leave of them right now. Say, oh, I don't feel. Stop that. Well, I just want to stop that. Well, I don't hear. Stop that. Take leave. Of your security. I've preached the word of God. It's eternal. It's power packed. It contains full dynamic divine energy. 
if there's anybody in this auditorium who will believe and take leave of your senses, you can be healed in the next five minutes. You can receive the Holy Ghost in the next five minutes. You can be encouraged and strengthened and built up and blessed in the next five minutes. If you will not somehow measure the dynamics of this service by the fact that there's no great big whoosh going on. Bring a sacrifice of worship. Come on, Mary. Break your alabaster jar. And reason screams, that's so stupid. But the Redeemer says, that's worship. How about it? How about it? Sing for me, Doc. Anything you want. Yeah, I went to visit a church. They were quiet as they could be. Nobody wanted to praise the Lord. Nobody but me. I heard a few of them start saying that I was emotional. I kind of felt out of place. But when I come to church, I don't just come to take a say. Oh, I'm just warming up. Please like, comment, and subscribe.